So this is showing a representation of a triploblastic animal in cross-section. So this is this blue line here is representative of the ectoderm, the outside of the animal. This purple line here is representative of the endoderm, which is lining the gut. So this is the gut here. This is where the food is digested and absorbed. And then in between, you have the mesodermal tissue. So we're talking exclusively about tripoblastic animals at this point. These are all bilaterally symmetrical and cephalized uh, animals. And there are three ways that the um, mesodermal tissue is presented. Uh, the simplest, although not very common, um, is known as the acelomate form. And this is uh, what you see um, in the flatworms. And basically what they have is an outside. They have a lining to their, their, their gut and then they, or their gastrovascular cavity. And then between the two, they have a solid layer of mesodermal tissue. And again, you can think of that as muscle. Going up in complexity, you see this with the roundworms and the, uh, the rotifers. Here we have what's known as a pseudocelum. You have the endodermal tissue, you have the ectodermal tissue, you have the mesodermal tissue, but you have a gap between the mesodermal tissue and the endodermal tissue. And this gap allows for circulation within the body of the organism. The flatworms have a gastrovascular cavity, so basically the circulation of nutrients occurs within their digestive system. In the pseudo, in the, uh, the, the roundworms, as well as the rotifers, they have both a mouth and an anus, and any distribution of stuff throughout their body occurs within um, this uh, pseudocelum, this, this body cavity, this fluid-filled cavity that is exterior to the gastro cavity, or the gut in this case, the gut digestive system. So it's within the animal's tissues but it's an acellular portion. And then we have, in greater complexity, the, the true coelomates, or the coelomates. And these organisms have these body cavities within, completely contained within mesodermal tissue. And this is what you see with most of uh, the animals, including ourselves. And an example of a body cavity would be, for example, the cavity that holds our heart. Our heart has to be in some kind of volume that's otherwise empty, fluid-filled. And that volume is a body cavity, and it's contained within mesodermal tissue. So it's contained within muscle and, and bone and connective tissue. So these are the basic types of, of animals that are tripoblastic. They're either acelomates, pseudocelomates, or they're what is known as coelomates. And again, the body cavity is this volume that's different from the gastro cavity. We think of the gastro cavity as this, this volume, this empty space being inside of us, but there are other volumes that are inside of us. They contain things, but, but they have to, be, um, they have to uh, be relatively empty so that they can contain whatever it is that they contain.